I'm uh, so obviously talking about clover root weevil um, as it um, impacts on pastoral systems in New Zealand. And just I'm going to give a very quick uh, overview of the biology in that because I think it's important to know when your pest is going to be a problem. And um, impacts, uh, control options, and the future. So here we go. Um, clover root weevil. Um, has a real strong preference for white clover, but it will go for red as well. We'll actually attack some other clovers, but you know, if you gave it a choice, uh, white comes out first, and then it will um, also attack red clover. And I've seen some of that up around the Lees Valley recently. Um, adults uh, feed on the foliage, as you see there. Um, the, uh, they, the larvae feed on the nodules in the root system, and, and you know, a very um, uh, Extreme situations, they can actually destroy up to 100% you know, um, uh, of the nitrogen fixing root nodules. Oh, sorry. Now, there's the great example. You know, that, that's a module that's being attacked by a first and star larvae. And what that does, it puts the plant under a lot of stress, particularly when you get you know, populations building up, and we do get some big populations in New Zealand. The, the plant is... Um, getting attacked, but the root system's been attacked, the nodules being hit first, the plant is unable, unable to fix nitrogen, so there's no nitrogen going into that system, you know, available to the ryegrass or your coxfoot, or whatever else you've got growing there. And in the extreme situations, you can actually see the clover can actually become nitrogen deficient itself. So it can be quite significant. If you're looking for clover root weevil, um, and the, probably, the, you know, we can you can start looking now, but, you know, September, October is a really good time to uh, look for them. Uh, in the soil, well, notching's the, the most obvious um, sign you've got adults there, um, and you'll see, the, I'll show you a photograph soon. But if you're looking for the larvae, f at top five centimetres of the soil, you know, around the clover, you can pull it up and you'll find these grubs there, and you can actually get some good populations. Um, there's some damage there caused to the stolons. Uh, but they'll also go for the root, the root system as well, as I've mentioned earlier. There's a classic example of uh, a, a clover um, that's been absolutely hammered by clover root, root weevil adults. And this is taken in February. So that's a really good sign that you've got clover root weevil. Uh, a bit about life cycle. They fly from mid-December through to February. And you'll, um, um, farmers have reported that you know, finding them in the, you know, attracted to the lights in the evenings, um, they are strong flyers. They've been found eight kilometres offshore um, on, on a landing on a boat. Um, and so you know, they, they do get around. Uh, air glane period, uh, January to November, is so, is so, um, so it's quite a prolonged period. These things are long lived. So you know, there's, there's, lot, there's adults out there and there's a lot of adults out there at the moment. Um, and we get, we've get the peak larva populations so March, uh, May, it's the first generation, well, it's the summer generation, and we get another peak in the spring. And that's where, when we get our biggest peak. They're very good hitchhikers. As, as a, um, and there's a great example, you know, there's no doubt about it, they've got through the South Island through um, movement of freight, sto uh, um, uh, stock, and hay. I'm not really going to, I'm going to I mean, flick through this, but you know, why, why is white clover important? I think it's fairly, uh, fairly obvious, you know, all, you'll know these, um, um, why it's important in the component. Here's some results to show that, you know, what imp impact clover weevil has, and, and um, I don't, uh, this is actually using uh, Prestige, uh, Grassland's Prestige white clover. Um, and I looked at three generations, uh, three densities. This was done in a sort of a coal frames or, you know, in, in a, in a sort of a glasshouse type environment. Classic example, look, the damage was quite significant. In fact, it worked out it was about, a, you know, in terms of the loss in white clover production was about a thousand kilograms per hectare per year. So quite significant. Uh, drought is important because, it, and, and you can see the, the, the two lines there, the green and the blue, um, the, the bottom ones, the uh, uh, those are in a drought year, and what result, that is a result of the eggs being desiccated and dying off, and um, the larvae not being able to get down into the soil to get to those root nodules, because they need those root nodules to survive. 
So, in, and then dry years, um, you know, there's, there's obviously impacts on the farm system, but it's actually impacts on the clover at weevil as well. Uh, management, um, clover at weevil are dependent on clover for their survival. If there's no clover, they won't hang around. Um, we can use uh, selective herbicides to take out the clover and you know, if you've got that luxury of having a six to eight month uh, fallow period, you'll get rid of your clover population. Um, adult clover root weevil love seedlings, so sowing, under sowing into a pasture, existing pasture, is just inviting trouble because the, the, the adults will preferentially go for the seedlings as they come through. Um, obviously we've got the uh, you know, alternative legumes because I mentioned before red clover is also eaten but it does tend to be more tolerant, it's useful. Subterranean clover, uh, Caucasian and lucerne are, are good options to have um, in, 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 your, in your system because they are more resilient to clover root weevil. And of course if you've got that ability you can add nitrogen because under, pop, under condition, conditions where the, uh, the populations are high, clover root populations are high, adding sort of small amounts of nitrogen, so sort of, you know, 20 to 30 units of uh, N can um, compensate for the damage caused by the weevil and keep your product, uh, productivity up. Insecticides, so there's also always a question I get asked and it's a, it's, a, it's a good question and to be honest we don't have all the answers because uh, there's not, not enough work being done. Um, Seed treatments are problematic because the, um, the, you, know, you just can't get enough insecticide onto the seed to protect it um, from, uh, for a long enough period. The weevil adults will go for seedlings. I mean, they might die, but they still get to take a chunk out of the seedling and it kills the plant. Um, the uh, adults are mobile, as I said before, they fly, so you, know, you, could, um, you, know, you could spray an area and you know, if you do it, spray it at the wrong time of the year, you can get an infestation within two weeks. Uh, larvae hard to get at because they're in the, in the nodules or they're down in, down in the soil. Um, we've, um, in the absence of the parasitoid, I'm going to talk about that soon, you can see we've got some possibilities. Um, insecticides at application, like something like chlorpyrifos uh, would be quite good um, in autumn when the weevils have stopped flying. Um, diasnon, we suspect it will be quite effective against the larvae, although it's untested at the moment. Um, and uh, fully insecticides, and see, as I say, in adults in early autumn uh, to late autumn could be quite effective. Um, in the presence of the parasitoid, this wasp we're going to talk about soon, uh, Maverick seems to be the, the one that, that works best. And there are some fa farmers this year who have had big problems with clover root weevil, particularly on the lowland areas, have been using uh, Maverick to control the, the weevil and try and protect the biocontrol agent. Right, this biocontrol agent, uh, this is the solution. Uh, and and we you know, we'll talk about where's, what's happening there. This is called Microtonus apiportis. Now, um, I think Graham talked about the, was it the flying mower. Microtonus means little murderer in Greek. So it's um, aptly named, because what it does, it attacks that adult weevil. It, actually, it get, lays an egg inside it, it sterilizes the females. They stop a, uh, egg laying. And there's a you know, that right hand side. There's a larvae inside the weevil. I dissected that out. We do a lot. I do a lot of dissecting. I think I've dissected two. Uh, not, I've worked out 9,000 weevils in the last three years, um, looking for parasitoids. It's not always successful. Um, but that's that's the job. And there's a, uh, a parasitoid emerging from the weevil. So it just you know bursts out. If you, those those of those that can remember Alien, they'll, they'll appreciate this. You know. The, you know, the weevil staggers around for 48 hours feeling sorry for itself and then dies. But that parasitoid larvae pupates and we get a new adult parasitoid coming forth. Uh, we are releasing the parasitoid in the South Island. It's well co covered in the North Island at the moment. Um, first released in 2006, we've, we're releasing uh, parasitised adults um, or um, in, in some cases um, uh, well, we release the parasitoid adults just in the field or we use these uh, uh, eclosion cages which you see down here in which the weevil uh, parasitoid emerges from the weevil 
and then pupates, and then uh, the adult ju jumps out into the paddock and it starts attacking the, 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 the wild population of clover root weevil. And you can see there, we have got, uh, that's where the yellow, the red's where the clover root weevil has been found, the yellow is where the parasitoid is, uh, is, is, is spread, and um, also the green is where we actually haven't found clover root weevil yet. So we're, you know, it's, it's ongoing work, um, and uh, it's, it's quite exciting because we, you know, we think this is going to be the solution for uh, the clover root weevil in most situations. How good is it? There's a great example. This is actually taken in the North Island. You can see there clover root weevil, big populations. Parasitoid was uh, uh, released, um, and this is, you know, up to July 2008, there are hardly any clover root weevil adults there now. Uh, in summary, uh, just quickly, um, we've got uh, you know impacts of clover weevil on, on sheep and beef. There's a lot we don't know, uh, to be honest, because we it's an area, particularly in the high high country areas or um, the foothills, we haven't done a lot of work in. But um, there will be you know obviously it all very much depends on how long it's been there, how long the parasitoid's been there, you know, if your farming system, uh, soil moisture and fertility, and grazing intensity and the age of the pasture. Uh, Biocontrol, that's, that's our sustainable solution because once it's released, it's there forever. It, as I say, it, will, it, you know, it does spread itself and, and it'll, it'll, it'll get up into the, the hill country eventually. And we suspect it will have a, in the South Island, it will have a major impact on clover root weevil. If you want more information, Pest Web's a good one. Uh, also, there's the AgriSearch we, uh, website. And um, you know that we'll, we'll keep we'll keep the information updated about where the parasitoid is and uh, how things are going and when the weevils out and about. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, is there any questions for Mark? Um, yes, one. Could, I'm not familiar with the parasitoid wasp. Yeah, it? it's about the size of a sand fly. So yeah. So it's not going to be easy to actually identify. No, it's them. not. No. No. Um, and my other question was, how how well does it um, continue if it finished with it? You know, just lowered the the uh, weevil population. Weevil. Yeah. Um, does it continue to hang around? It will do. Yes. Yeah. It'll just hang around at lower numbers. Yeah. I mean, we get big populations in New Zealand. There's no doubt about it of clover root weevil. The parasitoid is, you know, will hammer the weevil and, and bring that population down to a manageable level, and you know, until we're where we're not seeing yield losses. Like we used to. So it can manage to survive even if it's done the job. Indeed, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it'll it, it'll kill. Uh, yeah, it will kill uh, clover root weevil uh, if you're spraying it on as opposed to drilling. Um, uh, no doubt about it, diazinon is fairly toxic to clover weevil, but it's also very toxic to the parasitoid. So that's, I mean, so the, kind of the, the downside is that you know, you'll, you know, you, your biocontrol will break down as well. Uh, does it definitely not affect leucine? It definitely does not affect leucine, yeah. yeah um, it'll, it'll run a mile from, from leucine, figuratively speaking. Yes, there is. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that's been here for a while. And that's uh, the, the leucine weevil, Cytona discordius. Uh, and, but there has been a parasitoid released for that. And that was released back in 1986. And that's um, done a very good job in, in controlling the, the, the leucine weevil. Where do you get, yeah. Well, if, if you've got leucine, you'll have the weevil and you'll have the parasitoid. It's so widely spread now. You'll have more pressure in the spring from clover root weevil because, um, uh, and and the re and results may vary um, because uh, and that's I mean that's been my experience talking to farmers in the last couple of seasons, um, well over the last couple of years. The paris uh, um, in terms of um, clover root weevil, it, you sow in spring. There's a good chance you get the emergence of adults. You know, big emergence in that sort of 
October, November, December period. And then, you know, if, if they, you know, if they, find, they fly, they find a, a newly established um, pasture with you know, lots of young clover in it, they can be quite devastating. But as, as I say, some farmers I've talked to have had great results with uh, st spring establishment. Others have had some, have been devastated by clover root weevil. It can be, yes, yeah. And I, I guess um, this year has been a re was a, you know, the, the, the season just gone was very bad for clover root weevil and uh, in, across dairy, sheep, and beef, and, um, and uh, seed crops, clover seed crops, where the parasitoid wasn't established on quickly yet. It depends where you are. I mean, um, I can talk to you afterwards if you like, and we can uh, just discuss um, perhaps you know paying a visit and just just taking a sample because we do we do home visits. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, Mark. I think we uh, need to wrap it up there. Right. Um, I'm sure there's probably lots more questions everyone's yeah, got, yeah. and you've probably got I'll be, I'll, yeah, yeah. Them, but, uh, you're going to be here. I'll be here. Yeah. Feel a few more.